It's time for Washington Fish Quest. This episode, diving in the Nia Bay Jetty with Pacific Northwest Samson. Hey Washington Fish Questers, uh, day two here of my epic adventure with Chris Samson, Pacific Northwest Samson. So yeah, the first day of the rockfish simply weren't there and I was not great in the water. I, uh, you know, I'm still learning, but I was also extremely tired. I was running on four hours of sleep, running on like nine hours of sleep today, heck maybe 10, so I'm like jacked. We're headed out to Nia Bay. We're gonna do the old, the old jetty if we can. If there's, you know, if there's any kind of like tribal netting or anything out there, then we'll find another spot like a trail or something like that. But we're gonna do the classic Nia Bay uh, jetty dive. All right, Chris and I are in historic Nia Bay here on Macaw Nation land. So we need to get our $10 recreation pass. I believe it's 10 bucks to go, uh, you know, jump off the jetty to do a little spear fishing. Just swung in uh, to Big Salmon Resort there. They always are real nice to me. And then, yeah, now we're on our way to the Macaw Mini Mart where they actually sell the recreational passes. Little, little attraction there. It's actually $20, but it's per vehicle. So I, we plan to pay 20 anyway, and we paid 20 But to my pleasant surprise, it is actually good through August, I believe. I thought these were one-day jammers here, but uh, I guess I'll save this because who knows? Maybe I'll be back in August, so... Oh, very good. It even says join us for Macaw Days in August, so maybe I'll give that a try. All right, so that's the west side of the jetty. You know, I've taken my little lund out here before, and I've been halibut fishing, and every time I quickly turn around because I run into actual ocean conditions. Right now, it's like a lake. It is perfectly flat. I don't know if I've ever seen the west side of the, the jetty out here in Nia Bay quite like this at ever, so I am really excited to get in the water, even if I uh, have some things to learn. Nice, man. Yeah, we're looking good. Nice, calm conditions. As you can see here, Chris is very excited to get in the water. I think he covers 10 rocks in about the time it takes me to cover one. <laughs> All right, we're at our destination here. We're kind of probably like two thirds of the way down the jetty. Uh, Chris and I are gonna enter. I am not gonna be doing underwater filming myself. Chris will get some footage of me and he said he'll share any footage he gets, including footage where maybe I'm holding the spear if, that, if the opportunity arises, but I just need to focus on my form and that sort of thing and filming is just like another kind of distraction, you know what I mean? When you're trying to learn something and add steps on top of each other, it's really tough to also be like, oh, I need to get a good shot. I, I, was, I was experiencing that yesterday, so just for safety, I'm not going to personally film unless it's uh, uh, Chris's uh, spear cam. But uh, yeah, entering right here, looking forward to it. I uh, hope you enjoy the most of this footage will be pretty good because it's going to be Chris's and he's very good at filming. So yeah, I'm going to jump in there. Oh, and as far as some changes from yesterday. I thought you were supposed to be like shoulder deep when you were weighted properly. It turns out you're supposed to be like more like up to here if you do it like kind of like a passive exhale. So, you know, your head's supposed to be above the water and all that, but you're not supposed to be like this high above the water, like super above it. So I think that's probably the major reason I was having trouble getting down. I thought about taking my Farmer John's and cutting off the Farmer John's inside, but I'd rather keep that warmth. And we've added four pounds to my belt, and if that's too much, then I'll take some weight off. So uh, hopefully I can get down with my duck dives a little better today. In goes Chris to find the fish. Chris looked shallow and deep, near and far. Blake looked pretty shallow and close. <laughs> uh, unfortunately for us both, though, I, this wasn't quite a fish desert like uh, Area 4B was. Uh, it, there wasn't a whole lot going on. I don't know if it's because it was overfished or maybe the fish just weren't there. Maybe they were out deeper. Not sure what the deal was, but uh, as you can see there, beautiful, beautiful environment. Uh, Nia Bay really is a special place in the world. But uh, yeah, we just didn't come, couldn't come up with any major fish here. Uh, here comes the highlight of the dive, I think especially for Chris. See that feller down there? Yeah, Chris found a really cool wolf eel. After finding the wolf eel, he surfaced and actually uh, ditched the gun and just came back down to just start filming. So uh, a really cool thing about Chris is he goes from Spiro to Naturalist uh, in 0 to 60 flat. So yeah, look at how cool that wolf eel is. Look at that face. Yeah, they sure are awesome creatures, aren't they? So uh, after this point, Chris basically, like I said, he went from Spiro to Naturalist. And uh, yeah, when he puts his gun away, and I've seen him do this in videos, he's just content to look around. And that's that's a wonderful thing I've, I've noticed about free diving. It's just that option. Look at that. Look at that kelp forest. Oh my word. It's so beautiful being, being in there. You know, I don't quite get that viewpoint because I can't dive as deep as Chris. But even being closer to the top, it's pretty breathtaking. Uh, but yeah, look at this. Even the even the invertebrate life that Chris sees is uh, just remarkable. Oh, there goes a black rockfish. Of course, now that the spear gun's down. <laughs> yeah, check out these invertebrates. You know, even the non-fish species are just amazing to see in their natural environment. 
Uh, this truly is life's glory, folks. This is uh, this is amazing. Just uh, just even look at the stuff on the rocks. Meanwhile, I was like I say, closer to the rocks. I had a pole spear there, and I was more looking for surf perch to spear or maybe a rockfish. Got Mr. Kelp Greenling there, and uh, yeah, Mr. Black Rockfish, or maybe that's blue. I can't tell. Maybe that's blue. There's a decent ling in those rocks. Chris decided to let it be because it'd be better for the ecosystem. And here comes the highlight of the trip for me. Hey, this is my first ever uh, speared fish, but I'm stoked. First fish I've ever successfully pulled speared. I missed one earlier. Uh, but yeah, this one, it came through in a school like four, and it was pretty hard not to pick off one of them. And I got it, didn't, didn't stone it, but I got it right in the heart, so. Wicked, wicked. I'm sure a single striped sea perch isn't much for most Spiros, but to me it was a big deal because it was the first fish I ever speared. Kind of think back to the first fish you ever caught in a rod and reel. Park the Raven, here we are at Cape Flattery Trail. This is the most northwestern point in the lower 48, the lower 48 states. Yeah, Chris and I are just going to give, give it a good little hike here. It's a pretty, pretty short hike. I think it's maybe half an hour both ways if you're going at a leisurely pace. Yes, it's Quite a nice trail, everybody. It's uh, kind of a bummer to be out of the sun because the sun showed up now that we're out of the water. Yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes. Cape Flattery is so beautiful. It's been a long time since I've walked this trail. I think I might have been as much as 18 years ago last time I was out here. Yeah, I think that's right. Oh, it's crazy being able to say that. At any rate, though, check this out. Jeez, and if you make it out here, there's a lot of different viewing points. I totally forgot about that. Look at this, everybody. Those are big, giant clumps of gooseneck barnacles. That's a pretty common requested shellfish quest, and I will, I will come out here, not to this specific area, but to the northwest tip of Washington and do that, you know, I'd say eh, next year at the latest. But uh, yeah, just what a beautiful, beautiful place. You gotta check it out and be sure when you get here to really soak it in and enjoy all the vantage points. Man, what a place to make a living. That said, this one down here seems to have a crab. A seabird after my own heart. On a day like today, Cape Flattery really recharges your batteries. So Chris and I decided we're gonna do another dive. You know, we looked around, we drove up and down. There was a couple of spots, but we would've had to hike in, so we decided just to go back to the Neobay Jetty. All right, Chris and I are gonna give the Jetty one more try before calling it a day. I'm gonna try to walk out a little further. Just grabbing my stuff and I'm in a hurry because Chris just said there's a sea otter out here which would make it already worth the trip just to see that sea otter. So sea otters are basically driven to extinction in Washington or near extinction. And I believe all these fellows came were reintroduced from Alaska. A lot of folks when I post sea otter content say, hey, I got the sea otter down here by me in Tacoma. But you're almost certainly seeing is a river otter. So sea otters almost never go on land. So if you're seeing otters like playing around the docks and on the land, I mean. Almost certainly a river otter. And river otters tend to have these like bigger, I don't know how to describe it, like weasel-like tails. Uh, and whereas river otters are kind of rounder. But at any rate, yeah, there's a good good population of them out here. So you guys munching down a sea urgent. Sorry, it's a little shaky there. I'm holding on my gear. All right, we're about to get in the water again. Again, I left my camera back at the ranch. Uh, Chris has been super great in just sharing all this footage with me, and besides, there'll be much better footage. You're in for a real treat, and once again, you gotta check out Pacific Northwest Samson. That's P&W Samson. Where the sun was in the sky setting, it made it pretty dark in the water. Chris said it was sort of like a night dive. It was uh, still extremely beautiful, though, and Chris let me try out his, his dive light, which is the first time I've ever, ever tried one of those. That was cool. Again, all this footage, though, is Chris's.
that did it for Chris and I this day. Thank you, Chris, again for your kind teachings and just being a great guy. We're going to go out one more time. Hope to see you next week on that adventure. See you next time on Washington Fish Quest.